And welcome everyone to the latest installment of Orlando Magic Pod Squad. Dante Marcatelli, Jake Chapman, George Galante, and we're joined by Magic Big Man Goga Bataze. Kind enough to join us, the 18th overall pick in 2019 in his second year with the Orlando Magic. And Goga, I bet you don't know what to do with yourself with three days off here without a game. This has been, <laughs> finally, you had a little bit of a break in the schedule. How have you been enjoying the last few days? Yeah, it's really an unusual, you know, <laughs> you don't get three days between games. Like, uh, it feels kind of kind of odd, kind of weird, but at the same time, we get to, you know, relax a little bit. You know, this season is so long and uh, uh, so heavy scheduled that you don't really get so much rest. So we got the rest yesterday. Uh, today we had great, uh, great practice, you know. Um, and, yeah, usually just also – take some time off, talk with family, friends, back home. The timing is off. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to spend as much time as I can with them during uh, during the days off. So it's pretty good. And I guess we're going to have fresh bodies. People is kind of bag- banged up. So yes. the, time is, the extra two, three days is really going to help us. Have you seen a schedule like this since you've been? I know it's I know it's your fifth season in the NBA, but if you do you remember seeing as as crazy and as much travel and long trips like we've had to start this year? Yeah, it's so crazy that sometimes I don't even know where we're going. Like I just like oh, hop so on the plane, hop not on just the me plane. then. Yeah, yeah, hop on the plane. And then I'm asking like, oh, where are we going? And all of a sudden they hit us with the oh, it's a five hour flight or four hour flight. <laughs> oh man, but. Uh, I mean, we are blessed. It's basketball, you know. This is mm-hmm. we're we've been doing this all of us since we were kids. So uh, most more games like also like you have bad games, and the next one is like day after or the next day, and then you get to go back at it and uh, refresh your mind mindset. You refresh your mind, and uh, it's it's hard, but we're we are pretty blessed to have this opportunity. Uh, how we travel as well, like it's easier. So. Uh, we can't really complain. Go, go. What's the What's the time difference between here and home? Right now is nine hours. They're nine, nine hours. hours. So yeah. does so does so does it, is it hard to to catch up with family or 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 you just have to budget your time accordingly to make sure you know you know when you can catch whoever you're trying to get a hold of. Yeah, man, it's hard. It's it's really hard because obviously my family like they they have things to do as well. So like it's kind of hard for both of uh, all of us at the same time to be you know free and I have time but they really make it easy for me you know sometimes they stay up late just just to talk just just talk with me and uh uh either sometimes I, I call them late or they call me early before practice it's hard but uh it's been it's been five years it's kind of adjusting to, we all adjusted to that and also not a lot happening, you know, like I can't talk to them every single day. Not a lot happening. They see <laughs> right. me play. They know I'm healthy. That's all that matters. So, uh, yeah, man, kind of got used to this. How do they catch your game? How do they catch your games? Is it uh, tape delay? Do they do they get lead pass and try to watch you live? I mean, they probably can't watch you live. It's work time. Yeah, not all the games because it's so late. It's yeah. so late out there. But uh, in the morning, you know, like when we finish games, it's kind of eight. Like it's kind of early in the morning there, so they wake up early, see that uh, either how I, how we did, how the team did, how I did, that I'm healthy, and uh, that's pretty much it. So many games that I, I can't discuss all the games with my family, you know. Sure. So uh, either they wake up early or stay once in a while to watch the game, but they're not watching all the games. I, I don't want them to watch all the games. They got to get <laughs> their sleep as well. So, yeah. So, do you spend most of your off season back home? Uh, yeah, last couple of seasons, uh, it's been rough, you know, with national team as well. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, for my first two years, I was trying to be uh, be over here. Uh, I was in the Indy most of the time, you know, as, as your rookie, kind of getting it, adjusting into the league. You need more time to be out here. But right now that I've, you know, uh, matured, I've grown, uh, uh, most of the time I'm trying to stay home. You know, I got all my friends. All the people out there, I mean, there's stuff to do as well. Help my family uh, with with some things, you know. And uh, also me being around them, it's just uh, they, they really miss it. I miss being around family, just like not doing anything, just being out there. So that's the most refreshing thing I can do. Uh, so usually I'm out there most of the summer. 
I had a whole bunch of questions about Georgia, but I don't think we have time to get through all of them. But I'll just ask you, what do you miss most? Non-family, not non non-personal things. Is it is it a food? Is it a type of dish? What do you miss most from back home? Uh it used to be food, uh first couple of years, but now just the aura, like being around the people, like even uh going outside, see like hearing the Georgian language, you know, all around, you know, hearing my language just seeing the streets that I grew up in, seeing the buildings, you know, seeing the things changing and uh, just exploring. Cause it's like you, it's in one year, a lot can change yeah. and you're going back and you're not seeing all of it. Like, and the Georgia is like really, really beautiful. Like a lot of mountains, a lot of, uh, a lot of good places to visit. It's a small country, but it's just so heavy loaded with like beautiful places. So uh, just, just being in my country, I'm, I really love my country. So just being out there, the feeling that I get, the everything feels amazing. Just even like with waking up with my, you know, my mom being there, my aunt, auntie being there, and just even like getting the morning coffee. It's just amazing, man. And uh, yeah, that's that those kind of moments there. I miss. I love that. He's 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 used the word aura, George. He's not from this country, and he's got a better grasp of the language than you do. Is that, There's that's, no doubt. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. It's amazing. What else can you tell us about about Georgia? And you know, you're you, now you start playing basketball, right? I imagine you you probably didn't grow up watching a ton of NBA basketball, right? But uh, it, what what made you kind of want to go down that path? Did you play soccer? Did you play other sports? Tell us how you kind of started with basketball. The yeah, first thing they ask me about Georgia, I always bring it up, like. I'll be like, do you like wine? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, of course. I'll be like, yeah, we in invented the wine. We're the first country to make wine. Uh, and I like, love oh, Georgia. That's I why Georgia is my favorite. We're the, old, we're the first country. They just found the roots of the oldest grape grapes in Georgia. So we we invented the wine. So I bring that up. Uh, everybody that asks me about Georgia. Sold. So. I am sold. Yeah, so is that <laughs> so is everybody else? <laughs> so. Yeah, that's right. Well, you got beautiful places. You got mounds. You said you're on the water. A lot of it's on the water, and there's so much history there. It looks like Goga. Yeah, it's really old country as well. Like huge history, and you can see like just so much. So much is now. It's they're mixing with the, you know new things. They're adding new things, obviously, um, and it's just it's just amazing. Every every teammate they're, they're telling me, oh, we come to Georgia. I'm like, yes, please, like. Just come. So I, I feel like I have like 100 people coming to Georgia this summer. So <laughs> it's going to be a busy one. But um, well, now it's 103 because we're coming. Yes, yes 100%. <laughs> we're you're always welcome. We're uh, really huge with our hospitality. Like people really, you know, love the tourists and the people from other countries. And if you come, you're going to really enjoy it. So very cool. Yeah. Oh, it's not. You asked another question, right? Well, in basketball. So now you've got this beautiful country, and I'm sure, you know, I I, I don't know how big it is, uh, sports and basketball in your country, but what, what kind of got you into that? Uh, first of all, my dad uh, used to play. Uh, first, he started uh, wrestling, sambo. It's called the, the type of wrestling. Uh, uh, he was wrestling, then he was a professional basketball player, and also my mom is really – not really tall, but like tall for a lady. And my dad was six, 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 seven. So uh, I, I was tall from the beginning. I was a huge kid. So uh, at first I started, they put me in the basketball. Like, obviously, it's your kid. You don't really understand it. The coach was really rough on us. I didn't really enjoy it. You know, was on and off. Then I was playing um, football, soccer uh for a little bit they, they told me no you're too tall you can't do that <laughs> uh and at the end i stopped for playing for a year like some uh, issues you know um uh, it was rough and then i remember my coach or coach came in my in my classroom because i was trying to hide from him like <laughs> and he was like you have to come back this and that so i came back slowly fell in love with basketball and um uh, also all my friends you know was uh that that I really have and they're friends with now. Like we played in the same team, so they made it easy. Uh, we was a classmates as well, so they made it easy. And also, uh, my mom hates when I say this, but it was the right times in whole at home, like uh, in Tbilisi, Georgia. Uh, not as rough as it was before, but it was rough. So like the, that basketball being the in the sports was 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 better for me than I doing other things. So. 
Sure. Uh, um, they really, I guess, that was a great decision for me and my family. And uh, uh, shout out to my, you know, uh, my parents. You know, they really, like, pu- pushed me. My mom and my dad really pushed me to play and uh, really supported me. It was rough at times, but, you know, building the struggle. So it's been, come a long way. That's great. How long, ago now, was when you came over, when you got drafted and you got drafted by Indiana, had you been to the States before? Was that your first time in the States? First time that I got here was uh, MBPA Top 100 Camp. Okay. Um, I don't remember where it, was, uh, where it was, but yeah, that was the first time. And then I came back uh, for pre-draft that I did in New wow. York. So that okay. was pretty much first. But the first time that I was here, MBPA, I didn't get to see a whole lot. So the right. pre-draft was actually the first time that I really get to see the culture and the kind of like um, everything. I, I like to ask a lot of the the guys that aren't from America, you know, that we've had on the podcast or we've had just come through the halls here. That, that's got to be hard for an 18, 19 year old kid to, I mean, you're not just leaving home. You're leaving, you're leaving your country. You're leaving everything behind to come pursue yeah. this dream of yours. I mean, how hard was that? you know, first year or even the second year? I mean, when did you finally start to just settle in to, to, to being an NBA player and being away from, from home? That's got to be hard. It is hard for people who hasn't done before. So who hasn't done it before, who hasn't been to that struggle before. But I left my country. I was uh, 15 turning 16. I went to play the, in Serbia. And I left my family, my friends, everybody uh when i was 15 and it was like it's not like you get three or four months off during summer it was all work two two practices a day every single day games and i was getting like a week off a year like week or 10 days off yeah to get go back home and see my family and when you like it was three or four days during the new years and it was like a week or like 10 days in summer goodness yeah so when you go during new year it's like three four days you fly there you jet lagged you're already tired that day you're losing that day and you're there for two days you have to see all the people oh. and then you back and then turn so around I was, and go I used to it i was i was so used to it and uh i knew i like i had to do this there was like no doubt in my mind that oh no i can like not do this or i was just i had so much people behind the you know behind my back like so much people i had to take care of so much you know people was i I didn't believe i was that good but like people always believed in me always told me like you're able to do it like uh and all that so there was no never really a doubt even when i got to serbia's rough like 15 year old kid in different country like you don't know nobody um uh, struggling so uh yeah man i mean but also my family just I knew I had to do it and they never doubted me. So, yeah. You know, I think, uh, I think that that's when you met Dayan Milijovic, right? And and I think about, you mentioned the other day that he kind of helped raise you and it makes sense. You're 15, 16 yeah. years old when you go over there and you meet the, had to have been like a father to you. And I, and again, we're all so sorry uh, for the loss of yeah. Dayan. I know that yeah. that hits home for you, but just kind of tell us about that relationship. Yeah, man. First day I got here, Dayan was not my coach because he was with the first team, like the main team. I was obviously I was 15. I was not playing, right? And, uh, um, for for him, but uh, from the jump, like I used to go and like work out once a month with uh with the older guys with the main team, and like he would just he would be like really like paying attention and like I think he, like he he was seeing like what I am right now like way before and uh, once I got to the first first team let's let's call it that way and I got to work with Dayan it was every single day we was working on I don't know just basic hook shots basic basic things for like hours hours like staying after practices obviously we we hated it because we had two practices and then we was doing extra work it was like right we was living in there so uh, that was amazing also like he was just being around uh him and then he 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 had such a positive energy like it was it was amazing like always smiling like anybody you see like always smiling and always had that smile on him like bright face just bringing that 
amazing energy even now like it's it's it's, it's hard man it's hard to sure. believe like uh, believe that you know he's gone like the, the the i feel like good people live lives us early like god take yeah. taking them with with them you know he, he wants good people for for him so uh yeah just uh, he was amazing so I re- shaped not only me but so many other players into the players we are today and helped so many families you know uh change lives like let's let's call there so many people's lives not just with basketball just overall like how he approached the game how he approached the life a lot of us learned a lot from day on and he's he's gonna be missed for sure well, I know he's proud of you, Goga, and the job that you've done, and the player you player and person you've become. So, so kudos to you. Appreciate sure. you, appreciate you, man. Goga, Hope there so. had to be moments along along that that path before you even arrive at the NBA, where you're going. I'm too young for this. I'm too, this is <laughs> this is this is so much work to be asked of of a teenager. And I would imagine those voices, those those positive voices in your ear, are the ones that kind of pulled you through to the other side. But they, but I but. Take us through that. Were there times where you said, "I this is too difficult"? Oh man, oh, probably first time when I left my country. I never wanted to leave my country because I I thought I would never be. I I thought I I didn't have enough. Like for there was always a dream to get to the NBA, but it was never like real real dream. Like I never thought it was real, and uh, just see the family situation as well. Like I had to do something. Uh, you know, help my family. I was even before I started playing basketball. I was trying to like work little jobs, like sell watermelon, sell grapes, like trying to trying to do little things to help my family. And then it was like, okay, I'm getting paid. Or as soon as I got to Serbia, I was already getting paid because I was basically professional already, like just playing professionally. So even that, I wasn't getting paid a lot, but even that, like, was helping my family and people. Uh, so much and I love to take care of the people around me so there was like okay I can play basketball like it's hard obviously you gotta work every single day extremely hard to be away from your family but I was like at the end of the day it's gonna pay off and even if if it if I don't make it to the NBA I'm taking care of the people I'm helping my family and then and I'm living a healthy lifestyle uh, so I think also being alone and just thinking and uh, listening to my mom, talking with my mom, talking with my family, and just um, I think like I was pointing out and thinking about the right stuff. I had the right mindset. Uh, it's hard, but it's gonna get better at the end. So I just stayed positive because also when I got to Serbia, I wasn't playing at all. Like it was struggle, like really struggle. I had to fight, fight, fight for my minutes. Uh, but I think that made me much stronger. When did you realize Goga that it was was really a possibility to come to the NBA? What 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 age? Like where were you? What clicked? Did somebody did somebody say something to you that actually turned the corner for you? When when did that moment really turn from a dream into well hell this is going to happen for me? Like the, hmm. I'm going to get drafted in the first round. This is happening. How did, when did that happen? Oh man, uh, I'd like to call myself a humble guy. So you can brag here. It's, this is a safe <laughs> this space. Is your this is a safe I, I don't space. Have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I call myself a humble guy. And uh, so sometimes even now, like, I don't realize I'm in the NBA. Sometimes, okay, I remember the other day I was driving the car. Uh, was it the other day or I don't know, maybe a year ago. Uh, I'm driving the car. <laughs> yeah, the, the time, time, I don't have feelings of time. Uh, and uh, I'm driving the car. And I'm wearing this polo and has an um, NBA logo on it. And I looked in the mirror, I see the logo. I'm like, okay, I'm in the NBA. Like, I <laughs> That's still, great. Still, yes, till this day, I don't realize. I just go like hoop, uh, do my best. But uh, what, when was the turn? I don't even remember. Even when I got tra- drafted, I was so like, I, I, like I, I couldn't even get emotional. Like, I couldn't even like, because really? The thinking about those days, I, obviously, you're thinking about it. And he was like, am I going to make it? Like, like it's so far away. It's so far away. You feel like it's so far away that, like, you don't believe it's real. So even when I got drafted, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, even I got to the team and just it was so hard for me to believe because not so many players make it till here. And from my country, it's been only eight people in the in the history of Georgian basketball. So to be one of that is just 
always hard to uh, re like digest and like really lock into that that goga like there has been like i don't know somebody said 4500 nba players ever that has yes ever yep. played and it's like out of all these people you make it there is it's just it's amazing but sometimes i feel like yeah it's just a dream so yeah Dante, well how, have we, how have we had multiple georgians on this team then? that's right that's Isn't right that crazy we have uh, one there all right well, yes, uh, yes. Wendell, yeah. <laughs> Jake was Jake was going to ask you how far was your house from Wendell's yeah, house. Yeah, he actually was going to ask you that. But we, we in Chuma, about, we've had Chuma, yeah, Wendell. Chuma, 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 Chuma. Oh, we had Zaza Zaza Pachulia twenty yes, years ago was on our team, and and we got yeah, to get drafted here. Yes, and yes, he played here his first year. I mean, we we know Zaza really well, and now yeah, twenty years later, here's you. That's actually amazing. Yeah. That, when I think about it, that, that's amazing. Uh, there's 30 teams. There's eight players that has ever been drafted, and two yes. of us have played for this team. And uh, it always uh, brings joy to your heart. Like, I, uh, and yeah, I don't know. It was just Orlando loves Georgia and people. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. <laughs> well, is. I guess, I think Stepania was the first one, right? He was the first, and then Zaza was the first, right? The first that uh, came to Orlando. Did you? Did you? You must have been a fan of Zaza. I mean, you might that must have been he must have been huge back home. Yeah, but when he got drafted, I was obviously really oh, sure, sure. Or I, I wasn't even maybe <laughs> planned yet. <laughs> and and right. thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It makes us feel old. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, you know, but as you get older, you know he's here playing. It, it must yeah. have made it seem a little bit possible that maybe you could make it. Yeah, I never uh, really watched the uh, NBA. Um NBA games, but it was always national team. It was for us. It was first national team. There, it was any, anything else. So them, just so many guys that like, I grew up watching Zaza and uh, all the other guys. That's 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 what made, makes you fall in love with the basketball. Those you know big names and Zaza was obviously the one of the biggest. So um, and then he won two rings with the Golden right. State Warriors. Makes you know the. Uh, most accomplished, you know, uh, player in the history of basketball. So that was amazing. And uh, it was always like, I think that's a little spark that it's like, okay, he was just like you, same country, same uh, possibilities, uh, more or less. And then he made it out there. So you can make it out there as well. So that was always a little spark uh, in all the Georgian basketball players' lives, for sure. That's great. And now you get, I, I got to think, nobody appreciates the opportunity that they get more than you, right? So now the opportunity this year, you come to Orlando, uh, you, you know, at the end of last year, you kind of don't know where your career is going to take you, but you get an opportunity here in Orlando, you play a little bit. And then this year you start 31 games, you're having a career year, everybody gets hurt. And you're one of the guys, Goga, that keeps this whole thing afloat. This whole season could have gone completely south with all the injuries, right? Wendell and free lose Franz for eight games, but you're one of the guys that steps in and keeps this thing going, right? How much pride do you take in that? And how great has this opportunity been for you? I would call, I would say that I'm keeping this, uh, keeping this flow, but I'm helping a little bit for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, last year, uh, I think with four years with the three and a half years with Pacers and uh, you know, or COVID year, everything is just just happening. Uh, with some things happening in my career, just I just realized that all all, all you have to really ask the God is being healthy. Your your loved ones being healthy, your family being healthy. Because if you're not healthy, like none of this matters. If you're gonna have double double, or if you're gonna not right. score at all, none of this gonna matter if you're not healthy. So, uh. Just all, all it was for me, everybody was like, oh, you're going to kill next year. Like, if you get the chance, you're going to kill. I'm like, oh, just I want to be healthy. That's all I want to do and my family to be healthy. And now, um, you know, I signed with uh, um, Orlando during this uh, summer. I know that I'm going to be here. And it was for me, it was never like, OK, you're going to play first or whatever. Like, you're going to start, obviously. You, we know the rotations. We know what it's going to be like. But, uh, you know. I knew that I had to stay ready. That's what I learned during these four years, last four years, that I had, you have to stay ready because guys get hurt. Uh, it's bad, obviously, but guys get hurt. You've got to step in and be ready for uh, for anything. 
like you gotta be ready to play 48 uh, if it's necessary. So for me to see this uh, trust also, obviously I play great, but uh, the trust you get from your teammates, it's like nobody was really like surprised. It wasn't like, Oh, Goga, like you were playing uh, out your damn mind. You know, like I didn't <laughs> right. play like that, obviously, but uh, nobody was like surprised. Everybody knew what I could do, what I could bring to the table. I feel like that's why I'm here. And, uh, you know, bringing the toughness, you know, just making right plays, not doing too much, not doing, not making too many mistakes. I think that's what we needed. Uh, and for us to do great, nine game win streak, uh, yeah. you know, everybody talk about us being part of that is, is amazing. And also, we got long season uh uh i don't know how many 38 39 games left is so much it can change and uh just gotta stay ready i'm blessed that i'm healthy i'm blessed that i have amazing teammates amazing coaches that it's not just talk like they're really amazing like they make life easier and uh help you through this long long season and uh to get through uh, through it so just i love my teammates this team this team is gonna be in my heart forever for sure that's awesome uh, you're fifth in offensive rebounding percentage third in defensive rating i mean you've you've you're one of the league leaders in different categories but the last thing i gotta ask you goga and then we'll let you go and we really appreciate the time uh we're excited about where this is going to go i think you've made a lot of friends and a lot of fans here in central florida there are a lot of bataze fans uh that love when you get on the floor um, but I think one of my favorite stories is the Green Goblin story. Can yeah, you I tell every right? <laughs> you gotta tell you gotta tell everybody the Green Goblin story. That's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. Dude, how how it started, right? Um, so it was training camp. Obviously, it's a lot of guys, and it's uh, usually three or four teams. It's like uh, it's first unit, second unit. So they're wearing black jersey, black uniforms, uh, and the second um, second lineup is wearing white. And then we had the we had the green uh, green little overshirts that we was wearing. It was uh, me, Anthony Black, Caleb Houston, Chuma, and who, Jet, who else? was it Jet? I think Jet, Jet might have been there. It was Jet. We lost yeah. one of the Green Goblins, but he's always Green Goblin. He's been, <laughs> green, green Goblin uh, for life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then uh, we was wearing uh, green jerseys, and it was uh, we was like playing really good, uh, uh, like together. You know, like okay, beating black team, beating white team. Uh, not always, but we was beating them once in a while. Yeah, well, some of those made us nervous. We were watching training camp, and we said, oh, this is, <laughs> this team yeah. shouldn't be winning like this. But it was yeah, impressive. We, it was impressive. Yeah, we was hustling, and then we was bringing the energy, and I was like, okay, let me call this group, like, something. I got to I, like, I bring something up so to, to bring the joy to it, like, to, to be funny and people to talk about it. And then Green Goblins, and then we, we kind of – we we keep saying this till this day, like A B goes in the unit and then we make fun of him. We we'd be like, Oh, you're not a green goblin no more. I was starting and they were like, Oh, you're not a green <laughs> goblin no more. Now you're starting, like you forgot about us. Like Yeah. But um that's that's a little thing. And now Caleb played great or I I play good A B and everybody's like, Yeah, green goblins. So uh, I think that's amazing, you know, it brings a little more fun to the season. So um, we've been doing amazing, I think. People should look look at our numbers. Like together, yes. I, I said it. I don't think anybody's beating us. So yeah, <laughs> I love it. And they had three Green Goblins starting six games in a row. Okay, this has <laughs> been a sure. this has been a blast. We really appreciate it. Good luck rest of the way. It's been fun to this point. We can't wait to see what the second half of the season looks like. Best of luck. For sure, for sure. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate Thanks, it. Man. That'll do it for this edition of Magic Pod Squad with Goga Bataze.